What's up guys, it's Phil here and I don't really have an intro except that it's been a while and um, I thought we're just gonna do a funny video today. I found something we can react to, American things Europeans cannot understand and me being European I am curious what it's gonna be about so let's just start right into it. Here we go. The United States is exported all over the world in films and yes, on TV. Yes it is. It also abides by some laws and Ooh, practices police academy. that Just many watch consider that. unusual. It's actually Europeans not police academy. in particular seem to have a hard time wrapping their heads around some of them. From all child right. beauty pageants to gun yeah. laws, let's mm -hmm. take a look at some American things that Europeans can't understand. Sick of commercials. If you're a European enjoying a cozy night in on the couch in America, some of the stuff on TV may shock and surprise you. And really? No, I'm not talking about keeping up with the Kardashians. I'm talking about commercials, which arrive so frequently it makes watching TV feel almost unbearable to anyone unaccustomed to it. Seals leaks instantly. Use it <laughs> Especially pharmaceutical commercials, which usually show grumpy men and women turned into smiling happy people by that product being sold. Yeah, just pop some chemical pills and you're good. I remember growing up watching a lot of regular television here in Germany. There's uh, commercials as well and they, they increased over time, definitely. But when I went to America for the first time and we watched the television program, I think there's like 50-50, like you get a show and then you get just as much commercials almost. So yes, that was a bit of a culture shock for me, seeing the amount of commercials and uh, this pharmaceutical stuff. I think uh, when it comes to drugs, when it comes to like pharmaceutical prescription drugs, um, America is way more open-minded, uh, easier with prescriptions and stuff. So yeah, that is a bit of a worrying thing. I don't really understand how that's allowed. And uh, also with harder drugs, they seem to all experiment, but yeah. These are usually followed by an almost comically long list of potential side effects spoken at double speed, like Ambien ad. As well as abnormal behaviors such as being more outgoing or aggressive than normal, confusion, agitation, and hallucinations may occur. Don't take it with alcohol as it may increase these behaviors. Allergic reactions such as shortness of Holy breath, shit. and the throat may occur and in rare cases may be fatal. Side effects may include next day drowsiness, dizziness, and headache. In patients with depression, <laughs> What is happening? Oh my god. These yeah, but look how happy she's sleeping right now. How calm she's finally knocked out. This is awesome. Also, by Riesige und Nebenwirkungen lesen Sie die Pause bei Lernen, Frauen Angst auf der Theke. The commission stated that pharmaceutical companies were unable to provide impartial information on their medicines. If that's the case, why is it practiced in America? To put it simply, there's simply never been a federal law passed to outlaw the practice. Money. Pharmaceutical no companies, to the they fact that direct to consumer drugs and their accompanying ads are a huge business. And in America, yep. whether it's right or wrong, the rules tend to follow the money. Your exactly. parents might actually need a pill for the headache all those ads give them. May cause drowsiness, loss of limbs, telepathic powers, and a violent hatred of cheese. <laughs> no place like home. Okay. Let's say you're a European who's just moved over to America. Mm. You found a house in a nice can't, residential neighborhood. Can't leave your house without a your car. Bills. Rent, water, gas, electric, all seems in order. Yeah. But wait a second. What's a homeowner's association fee? Dude, well, native, makes me angry. a pretty obvious question. But for Europeans, it's an unwelcome surprise. Yeah, yeah. These fees contribute to the local homeowners association, which is somewhat like a neighborhood watch, but managing funds to be reinvested into the community. But are they actually it goes doing a lot? Like residential maintenance and common spaces, which keeps residents right. happy and property values up. With around 24% of all Americans living under a homeowners association, they pay $200 to $300 <sighs> on average per month in fees to these entities. That goes on top of your rent or your mortgage. Mortgage rate. Uh, I still don't fully understand what this is. It feels like it's made up by private people. I think it's not like governmental stuff coming down on you, right? It's like, oh, let's build a homeowners association so everybody in our neighborhood pays some money. Like, that is literally something I don't understand. Now, while some Europeans might struggle oh, with this I, concept, I, it was a form of governance that was actually invented by France back in 1804. So, for any the European French. that wants to complain about homeowner regulations and fees, feel free to blame the French. I'm fine with that, let's just blame Making the French. Vacation days. The USA has one of the largest economies in the world. Mm -hmm. A tremendous economy, in the president's tremendous. words. But Europeans looking to get into the American world of work are often shocked when it comes to vacation time. US Below 30 days, no, no. Somebody offers you a job and you get less than 30 vacation days, just say no. Workers are not entitled to mandatory paid vacation at all. 
Usually, the issue of paid, paid leave is left at the discretion of employers. And yes, that does include national holidays. In 2017, only 77% of American workers had access to paid vacation. Mandatory paid vacation time in Europe starts at four weeks. In fact, America is one of the only Western countries where law doesn't enforce companies to give its employees mandatory paid vacation time. And it's mind baffling to me, dude. He says it starts at four weeks for Europeans. That means just 20 days because one weekday is five days. Uh, usually the standard is 30 or more, sometimes 35. And then on top of that, you get bank holidays free, which are like 11 to 14, I want to say. Of course it's paid. You get a proper salary and uh, you take your vacation whenever you want. And uh, it's not like lowering your salary. Also, when you're sick, it doesn't come off of your vacation days. I heard about that, that uh, you have to take vacation days when you're sick in America and a lot of companies. And that is not a thing. You can't help being sick, you know. So you go to the doctor, you get a sick thing and then <laughs> it's just on top of your vacation. And uh, it's also a good way to, to prolong, to extend your uh, vacation, uh, if you know what I mean. Don't believe me? Take a look at this map breaking down mandatory paid vacation time by country. Only the great countries are known not to give paid time off. All right. It's a working culture that undoubtedly favors. So let me see the map name? again. So it's uh, basically just the US. Uh, which one is this? Uh, Afghanistan, some of the stands. So it's basically just the US and Greenland. Greenland with this huge population. Maybe it's just white on the map because it's cold. Not to give paid time off. It's something in America. It's a working Africa. culture that undoubtedly favors employers over employees. So I don't know if that equals. If the American states could be looked at as a dysfunctional family, then Florida would be the weird uncle who once ran away with the circus and wrestled a tiger. The All right. Sunshine State is the third most populous state in the USA and receives over 100 After million California, visitors Texas, year on and year. Florida. All with right. so many people living between Miami Beach, Disneyland, and Pensacola, a little crazy is bound to be found. I've been to Florida. I have not encountered Florida, man. I heard a lot about him. The crazy antics of Floridians that make daily headlines. From Florida man believed that he was half man, half dog. In March 2019, to hey, if you identify as a dog, bank, you know, strips naked, then runs down the street throwing stolen money everywhere. In July throwing stolen money you naked. Can search the what? Why not? Almost any day yeah. of the year and find a headline announcing Florida man has committed an utterly baffling crime. Although the UK comes close with some of its questionable journalism topics, like Britain's fattest woman ate fridge and died. 6,000 calories a day from stash snacks to bed. Yeah, that does it. But uh, yeah, Florida man. I always hear about it like, I don't know. I feel like crazy shit is happening in America everywhere. Let me know the funniest local headlines you've ever seen. I think it's some regulation that they need to call it Florida man and can't give out the name that or something. Trouble. In Europe, like most of the world, tax is built into the price of items in store and online. And that's how it should be. I can't stress this enough. If something says $4.99 and I go to the checkout with my five euro or five dollar bill, I should get one cent back and they should not add some money at the checkout and be like, oh, that will be 512. You know, it makes no sense. So what you see on the tag is what you pay. Exactly. And Europeans visiting an American store might be left doing a double take mm. at their bill when they reach the register. Yep. There is no national sales tax or value added tax in America. Instead, American taxes differ by jurisdiction. And that is the explanation, the justification people say to me, like, no, you know, the tax differs from state to state. But, you know, there are enough people working in these companies just to, you can just add it, you know, if it's, uh, I don't know, 10% in one state, then you add the five cents to the five dollars. And if it's 20, you add the 10 cents to the five dollars. So it's 510 or it's 55, you know, but uh, it's not that hard. It's just an administrative thing to do and that's all they're doing that jobs that literally do this all the time so please of which it feels like a scam thousand differences it's like a nationwide scam state taxes or combined state and local taxes go to a restaurant do that and then tipping on top holy cow from one street to that's my place. that's my example First time shoppers in the u.s this unpleasant surprise is it's a rite of passage that no one asks yeah look at that subtotal you buy like i don't know what they bought like uh a car for like 5,998 and then, okay, that will be 6,462. Like what? It's for tipping point. Yeah, there we go. A meal at a restaurant can be a real treat, but Europeans visiting America sometimes stress about the tip. 
Now, although tipping any up to to pay taxes seems normal and to tip. most Americans, there's no such obligation in Europe. Indeed. He says up to 20%. I think 20% is nowadays considered the minimum you should tip in America. Indeed, it's mostly seen as a bonus reward for good service. It doesn't matter if it sucks. in some sucks. European countries, it's even considered rude and excessive to leave a tip. The American federal government, however, states that tips can be used to satisfy the difference between the employee's hourly wage and the standard minimum wage. Just listen, but to satisfy the difference between the minimum wage and the actual wage, saying that the actual wage they're getting, waiters, is lower than the minimum wage. Isn't that contradicting? If there's a minimum wage that needs to be paid, then pay the minimum wage or more. But uh, how is it below minimum? Then it's not the minimum. Like valets and in-house staff in certain states can be working for a federal wage. I know. Wage I feel like just waiters should just strike. Go on strike hour, for a long which time. Which is about one euro ninety-six cents. So That's if bullshit. you're a European visitor to the states, get ready to factor in your tip to the overall. Pro I'm really curious. Is there anybody out there who works for two dollars an hour waitering? Like, if you are, please let me know. If you know somebody, literally know somebody, let me know. Not just I heard about it because everybody heard about it, but I really want to know if people work for two dollars per hour and then have to rely on tips. It, it might sucks. well be contributing to a struggling waiter's rent. Child beauty pageants. Here we go. If you've ever been unfortunate enough That's to have so watched cringe. an episode of Toddlers and Tiaras on TLC, Toddlers and Tiaras, I have not heard about that. On the next matter. But, uh, Child beauty pageants are common across shit. America and usually consist of dolled up little girls being thrust onto a stage to entertain Whoa. a crowd of screaming moms. It's <laughs> truly bizarre. Child pageants originated from American Better Baby contests in the early 20th century. Better babies, babies. Would be scored on characteristics like weight, quality of skin, and face shape, supposedly in the name of helping to educate mothers on best practices for healthy babies. All right, but of can course, you affect that? It wasn't that? just for education purposes. This is slowly I like ugly babies. The ugly babies are the of best, and a then they grow up. Stage in full makeup and style hair to do a dance routine hot. for prize money. Although some European countries host similar but smaller events, others like France have gone. Dude, I feel even uncomfortable watching this. Is this in France? Not as far as to ban all such pageants. Yes, please, an thanks. Healthy way to treat young girls. What is that? If you ask me. Holy fuck, man! What is that? That's not a human, and she doesn't do that uh, voluntarily. That's some freaky mom forcing her. Yeah, their general creepiness alone should be enough to slam the brakes on child yeah. beauty pageants. Yeah. Honey, boo boo. No thanks. Holy cow. Size is everything. According to an old saying, everything's bigger in Texas. But if you're a European, you'll probably think that about all of America. Yeah, right kind down of. to its people. It's no secret that America has a little bit of a weight problem. Two Damn, I want to go to Texas. I haven't been. That's uh... overweight. And it's estimated that almost 40% of adults in the U.S. age 20 and over are obese. Contrasted to Europe, where a survey carried out in 2014 labeled just 15% of adults obese. A study comparing portions in Paris and Philadelphia revealed food outlet portions were 25% larger in Philly. Okay, so they compared Paris and Philadelphia, and um, I expected huge portions going to the US. We've been to the East Coast mainly, and in like South Carolina and uh, Florida, where I ate, I had to say I expected more, like I was not blown away by the portion sizes. There's a lot of dense calories, a lot of uh, fried unhealthy stuff, but the portion sizes did not blow me away. So I'm curious if Texas would do that for me because I, I really expected that. And Paris is also like, I think known to be this pretentious thin people city. Uh, everything is so expensive, like they don't, I, I, I see this point though, but uh, I don't think Paris size, uh, portion sizes are probably the most representative for, for like Europe, I don't know. Maybe Germans just eat a lot too. And a review of 17 different single serve foods like yogurt and candy bars found that 14 of them were bigger in Philadelphia. Yeah, groceries are usually bigger packs. One country comparison doesn't necessarily represent the whole. European Which is more of a logistic problem, I comment think. on how much bigger everything seems stateside. Pizza, no. Have you noticed this difference in portion sizes? I got sizes? a person sized pizza, you know which is low. ridiculous, Bonus man. points for food puns. Oh, sugar. Living in America can really give you a taste Donuts. for the sweet life. Donuts are so much better in America. Thank you for it. Why? Well, some American foods and drinks have been found to contain mm. huge amounts of mm. sugar compared to their European equivalents. Mm -hmm. Some common bread brands contain up to six grams of sugar per serving, six times the amount found in European counterparts. 
Is that true? Like the same slice of white bread would be way higher in sugar 600. I can't, I can't believe that. Maybe the European one is way smaller. But it doesn't end there. Taking a look at Pizza Hut sugar content reveals most of their stateside pizzas have close pizza to pizza? double the amount of sugar per slice as Don't European like versions. It. And in Starbucks, a UK venti white chocolate mocha will contain 62.4 grams of sugar. But in America, that shoots up to 72 grams. What I noticed on the drink sizes that he speaks about now is that in America, if you go to like a fast food restaurant, like if you go to McDonald's, they have small, medium, large drinks. The, the, the large drink is half a liter. And in America, at McDonald's, you can get a one liter cup or even like a one and a half liter cup. So they are way bigger. That is definitely I've one thing I noticed. Not a, not a thing about Europeans it. Europeans making the trip across the Atlantic might leave suffering from a toothache. Gaps in the market. European standards of building a public <laughs> restaurant involve plenty of privacy, mainly in the form of cubicles with doors that yeah. are more door than gap. Seems obvious, but it's a standard that Americans just can't seem to adopt. With ridiculously large gaps yeah, at the it's top, bottom, and sides, it makes for a truly uncomfortable first visit yep. to an American yep. toilet for unknown like, visitors. What, what am I doing first here? time, Europeans are left feeling especially susceptible to unwelcome visitors and Absolutely times. true. Yeah, Some that's what it feels like. resort to taping up the gap to prevent prying eyes looking in. <laughs> but as strange as the design seems, there are some theories as to why Americans build their Don't stalls Don't tell me security. Way. For a start, high floor gaps allow for easier cleaning, and yeah. they do make it simpler to pass toilet paper from one cubicle to another. <laughs> That's top why of that, the vertical gaps act as a deterrent for anyone thinking of doing anything naughty behind closed doors. But there's always the chance you might accidentally get a real eyeful. You can't tell me that millions and millions of toilets in the US, public toilets, have these gaps because people want to have sex in these toilets. I don't think that that's the reason. That cannot be true. And uh, people always say, oh, it's security reasons, you know? They need to see if somebody died in there. Like, are people just doing drugs in public toilets everywhere? Uh, Maybe nah. just close your eyes. There's no good justification for this. Restrooms. Yeah. <laughs> Triggered. It strikes many Europeans as a bit odd that in America you can pick up your groceries from one aisle of a store and a gun from another. Yep, Indeed, fucking you can weird. buy guns over the counter in places like Walmart, and ammo can be found in pharmacies. Let's ammo can be found in pharmacies. I have some of the uh, paracetamol and then a little bit of aspirin, and then I would like to have the uh, 7.56 millimeter full metal jacket, uh, can of bullets or whatever. I don't know what, how to do that. Many parts of Europe. What is it that Europeans find weird about the gun-loving, rifle-wielding, Second Amendment-touting American citizen? It might have something to do with America's gun-related death rate, same yeah, as per no capita. Shit. There were 12 gun-related deaths for every 100,000 people in America in 2017. Very few European countries exceed three gun-related deaths per 100,000 people, and none even come close to America's 12 per 100,000. Uh, so it's just four times better in Europe. I would have assumed it's like a hundred times less. The causes of the problem are fiercely debated, but it might have something to do with how easy it is to buy a gun. Background checks are usually carried out, but a research survey from Harvard in 2015 estimated that a third of American gun owners have purchased a firearm without a background check. Great, in Europe, that sounds many countries amazing. like Austria and Germany require would-be gun owners to go through a rigorous seven-step procedure before owning a gun. You can't just even own a gun. You need to be like a certified hunter with like thousands of dollars of training, theoretical and practical, and then you're allowed to, to own guns and not even like the guns you're allowed to own in the US. But I'm not an expert on that, but it's just you're not allowed to own guns. That's the whole point. High caliber handguns are outright banned in the UK. Yeah. And many categories of semi automatic, Nothing automatic weapons yeah. are illegal to own across Europe. Ooh, uh, it's simply much harder to legally <laughs> purchase a gun in Europe than it is in the U.S., which I'm sure is a trigger point for some. Oh. All right, so American things Europeans can't understand. Like, I uh, heard about most of them, and I kind of can understand why they do it, mostly for, like, money reasons and stuff. Depends on the point. But, yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely some culture shocks as a European, and I think uh, they should change, and that would make America... Uh, better place, but yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was kind of fun. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.